the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. <clears throat> Today is the fourth Sunday of these blessed and holy 50. Christ is risen. Truly, he is risen. I wanted to focus today on, saw, uh, on verses 35 and 36 from today's gospel, coming from the gospel of St. John, chapter 12. Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. <clears throat> St. Cyril of Alexandria tells us that Christ our Lord is the great light. And the brightness of that light is the gospel preaching. I wonder if we understand this. Can we imagine <clears throat> what our lives would be like without the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ? Can we imagine our lives still in the slavery to sin? Can we imagine a life without Christ in our midst? What an empty and dark life that would be. But thank God that we're not in darkness. So the gospel today reminds us, don't chase after it. Don't chase after the darkness. Follow Christ. The worst thing for a Christian is to act as if he or she is still in darkness. Even when they have known Christ to be the true God. Don't live your life so that it's full of things that distract you. Full of busyness, full of work, collecting things that you can't keep forever. We focus on Christ. We give him our hearts. We give him our minds. We give him our, our life. And then we'll be full of light. Each one of us has to reassess our lives daily. And we have to see if our goals are lining up to our actions. And we have to see if we're on the right path or if we're fooling ourselves. Our goal is to grow in Christ and to grow in our likeness to Christ the Lord. That's our goal. The way of light that the Lord Christ has given us requires sacrifice. It requires us to abandon false paths, false desires, What's false? Anything that disobeys the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only are these things false, but they don't save. They don't bring us life. They don't bring us fullness. So, each and every day, we can check our actions against the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. If something is unclear, if something is uncertain, perhaps we need to dig deeper into the writings of the church fathers and the saints for clarification. Not outside sources. In this way, there is always a check and balance for us, and we won't confuse darkness for light. Our Lord Jesus Christ wants us to be children of light, who live and breathe and move in the light of God. He wants us to become little lights, as he is the great light. So, even our lives will help others find their way to the Lord. Again, our Lord said in today's gospel, Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. In the epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 5, he echoes this. He says, Brethren, walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true, and try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. It should go without saying that when we commit sin, we're not being productive. We're not being fruitful. We are wasting the valuable time 
that has been given to us as a gift and we're wasting the life that we have been blessed by God with. All of it wasted on the one who partakes of the works of darkness in unrepentant ways. This life of sin, it cuts us off from God, but it doesn't end there. It starts with being cut off from God, but sin doesn't rest. Sin doesn't rest until it has cut us off from our families and our friends and our own right minds. Sin literally makes us useless for our fellow brothers and sisters. This is why St. Paul says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. This is not the light of the sun and the moon. This is the divine light of God. The light of life. This is the light that I want to fill my soul. And during the days of all the struggles of the day, I have to decide what will fill my soul. Will it be darkness of sin or will it be the light of God? Each one of us <clears throat> is cultivated by our choices and our work. Each one of us is drawn based on the state of our hearts. If our heart is seeking after goodness, after God, it cultivates good and finds that it has the fruit of light. If our heart is inclined towards sin and madness and chaos, we find that we quickly cultivate a garden of filth in our souls. We produce a stink, a rot. And the stench doesn't just bother us. It bothers those who are around us, near us. Thankfully, St. Paul gives us a way out. He says, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but expose them. Expose them. There are many ways that we can expose our sins, but I'm going to focus on the most important one. The one that the church provides for all its people. The sacrament of confession. Confession is a powerful medicine. And it's given to us directly from the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ, who said to his disciples, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is why, during the Holy 50 Sundays, in the fraction that we usually pray, this is repeated over and over every Sunday. We're talking about St. Mary Magdalene and the spices and the women carrying, and all of a sudden, we focus on this in the fraction. We say, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. All of a sudden. It's like the church is trying to tell us something. Confession is our opportunity to expose our works of darkness to light. It's not the light of the priest, but the light of Christ that works dynamically in the one who comes boldly and lays their sin at the feet of Christ. The sacrifice of ego, the sacrifice of pride, is exactly what the Lord is seeking. In the Psalms, when we, when we read, a sacrifice that is pleasing to God is a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart God will not despise. Don't simply tell God in private that your spirit is broken, that you're sorry for your sin, this is good. But prove that your heart is humbled by opening up and bringing your sins to the one place where they can be exposed to the light more fully. Expose them. Bring them to the place where we see the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. The priest is not interested in your sin. We don't care. Just like the doctor is not interested in your sickness, they're interested in your recovery. The doctor is interested in your recovery. 
He wants to see you healthy. He wants to see you holy. Now, I want to go back to the gospel of today in the beginning, the second part of verse 36, that you may become sons of light. That you may become sons of light. Our Lord says, I am the light of the world. But he also says to his followers, you are the light of the world. This is in Matthew chapter 5. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Right? You are the light of the world. He challenged his disciples and he challenges each one of us to reflect and shine his divine light and love and mercy and grace to others. How do we do this? How do we share God's light and shine his divine light as individuals and in a community? Here I want to focus on how we, as the church, as the body of Christ, can radiate his light. Our community has a responsibility. We have a responsibility to shine the light of Christ here in Chino Hills, California and throughout the world and our neighboring cities. That not only means each one of us going, that means all of us going out like little lights into this dark world. Being filled with divine light each time that we gather in the divine liturgy and we walk out of this church, we should be like shining torches. It means that we have to do something special as the body of Christ. We, as the church family, have been blessed, and we need to find new ways to share our blessings in meaningful ways. You are the light of the world. Here is our call in life. What is essential for all of us to understand is that our Lord said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall walk in the light of life. But he also told each one of us, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine. He has brought light into our lives. He has changed us, hopefully. He has transformed us. He has transfigured us. So that we share his light We shine his light in the world around us. There is darkness all around us in every day of our lives. How are we shining the light of Christ in that darkness? How are we shining brightly the light of Christ to each other in our daily lives? I heard a beautiful story, a little analogy as I was preparing, and I'm going to share it with you. I didn't come up with this. A father who had just bought his son a powerful flashlight for his son's upcoming camping trip. As they walked out of the store in the daylight, the young boy wanted to try out his new flashlight to see how it worked. But being outside in the daylight, though, he couldn't see the light. He complained to his father that the flashlight didn't work and that they should return it. The father explained to his son that a flashlight wasn't made to shine light in the daylight, but it was made to shine light at night when darkness is all around. You take the flashlight into dark places, the father said, and you will see it light shine. Isn't that what we're called to do? Think of where you see darkness in our world. It's easy to look on social media and see awful stories of darkness in society and politics and the world around us, But where do we see darkness in our daily lives? Among the people that we interact with every day. The darkness of loneliness. The darkness of addiction. The darkness of depression. The darkness of despair. The darkness of illness. The darkness that comes from a broken life. And let's pause for a moment. And just think about someone that we know in our lives, someone with whom we have contact in a regular basis who is struggling. 
And we have to ask ourselves, how can I bring light into their darkness? How can I allow Christ's light of hope shine from us to them? God forbid we are providing darkness for the people around us with harsh words, harsh reactions, impatience. Maybe it's us. Think about my interactions at home with our friends. Maybe it's me who's bringing darkness, not light, and I'm gossiping, and I'm tearing my brother and sister down. Our light is needed precisely where there is darkness. Never despair about the darkness that we see around us. Instead, try to shine a light and be the light in the darkness. We need to turn on our flashlight of faith. We need to become instruments of light, shining Christ's light into the world. We have people struggling with various issues, all within even our church family. What are we going to do about it? I want each one of us to think about the people that we cross paths with each and every day and we think hard about every person and ask yourself where the light of Christ needs to shine. How can you, how can I, bring the light of Christ? Maybe it's a visit. Maybe it's a phone call, a text message. Maybe it's simply sitting with someone and just being a good listener and not offering any solutions, just being a good listener and keeping our mouths shut. Maybe it's comforting them with our presence instead of tearing people down. So just to conclude, during these days, we remember Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and on those in the tombs bestowing life. The resurrection of Christ is all about life over death. It's all about light over darkness, goodness over evil, joy over sorrow. It's about new beginnings. Our Lord confronted all forms of darkness and evil, betrayal, denial, rejection, ridicule, persecution, torture, an unjust and cruel death. All of it. He confronted each form of evil by not giving into it. He did not allow evil to lead him and to respond in an evil way. No, he responded to each form of evil with divine love. Although Christ was unjustly arrested and tortured and mocked and brutally killed. He didn't lower himself to their level. He didn't allow hatred and revenge fill his mind. He responded to evil with good, to hatred with love and mercy and grace. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. To St. Peter, who denied him three times, he gave him a new chance by asking him three times, Peter, do you love me? He didn't call out his legions of angels to come and save him from death. No, he embraced it. Turning death itself into nothing more than a pathway into the kingdom of heaven. Don't get used to all the darkness around us. Have a reaction. Let it bother you. Don't accept it as the norm of life. Instead, continue to shine the light of Christ. Our Lord, in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, if we're familiar with it from the first hour of the Agbeah, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. May our light shine more precisely. May the light of Christ shine through 
each and every day, especially in the dark places of the world, wherever you see darkness, don't complain, don't be scared. Instead, let the light of Christ shine brightly from our lives. And glory be to God forever. Amen.